Good morning, everyone. This is Jackie Schwab with the Press Play Lifestyle Inspired Podcast, where we do interview with ladies like Miss Melissa here on topics that you, our listeners, can use to get support and to do all the great things you need to be your best inspired self. So first, I would like to say thank you so much, Melissa, for taking time out of your busy day. I know you are helping entrepreneurs all the time grow their business. So to take some time out with us is just really great. So thank you so much. Absolutely. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Good. I'm excited. So first, Melissa, would you like to just give the audience a little brief intro of who you are, what you do, and you know why you're on the podcast today with us? Sure. Um, so I am a wife and mom of a beautiful two-year-old little girl. I left corporate America, um, oh my gosh, it's almost been five years ago, to follow my now husband, thankfully it worked out right, um, across the country for his career in the military. And so I gave up everything and basically started over from the ground up. So I went from very lucrative six-figure corporate career that I was growing in rapidly to starting over as a virtual assistant at $12 an hour. Um, because I was like, I'm going to figure this stuff out and I'm going to create a career that is portable no matter where we go and something that I'm proud of. So a lot of hard work, a lot of wrong turns has taken me on this awesome journey to where I am today. And I'm very, very thankful to have a fantastic business where I get to work with entrepreneurs and help them grow their businesses and take it to the next level. So gosh, that has just led to so many amazing opportunities and finding people like you to get to share my story and learn from your amazing network of people. So I'm, oh. I'm blessed to be on this path. I love that. So that makes like so much more sense. So one of the things I noticed, cause I, I say this nicely, it's probably inappropriate, but I kind of stalk my, my guests before so that I can yeah. try to make sure they look good. And I noticed you have this really <laughs> cool five steps, five simple steps to a profitable online course, a profitable online business course called remote work roadmap. And that mm -hmm. makes a lot more sense. So it's like, seems like based on your life circumstances, you needed to find a new way to support your family and your, what you've done, right? The stuff right. You've about work. Um, it makes sense that you would be like, kind of have that as a, as an offering. Definitely. Right. I know that's, it is, you, you're very smart. You're a very good stalker to find that out. <laughs> um, so my traditional background is in teaching, believe it or not. So it's just, it's kind of this natural evolution of how things have come about, but I have created a community of military spouses to help them um, get started with remote work or provide resources to help them grow their online businesses. So this remote work roadmap kind of came out of answering the same questions over and over and shortening my path to success and taking out some of those stumbling points and just breaking it down into something digestible and it's, it's applicable to any type of business out there. So it's been a really fun thing to you know, produce and help other people get to their dreams. So, Yeah, that's awesome. So I didn't notice that in there that you are a military spouse. Um, I actually have, it seems that this is a common um, coping mechanism. I don't know right the word, right? The right word. But um, like my, my aunt, my aunt has been married to a career, um, career military person. And she created this really cool like online printable store for, she's Catholic. So she, all these like booklets and she's a teacher. So it, it was like a natural transition and she had to be wherever he was. So mm -hmm. having something she could do digital, but she kind of did digital before digital was cool. Um, I oh, was that's like, awesome. I'm like, look at you lady friend. That's amazing. Falls. <laughs> um, but then a couple other uh, lady friends of mine, one, uh, her husband's deployed in um, Hawaii and so she, she went, um, she does big events for women, like event empowerment events for women, oh, cool. but she spends a lot of time like with military spouses as well, because you kind of all have very, you know, have a similar situation, right? You kind of got yes. to need to do yep, wherever. Absolutely. And you can't be like, sorry, hon, you have to help this time. He's like, yeah, right. I'm like Afghanistan. Sorry, bro. Right. And for me, it wasn't like, I love being a mom, but that's not my whole identity. I still needed the career piece. And that was really, really important to me. And so being able to build this business while being a mom has been amazing. Yeah. It sounds like it's been great. I, um, 
my change from, I was a software developer and product manager for about 20 years. And oh, wow. then um, I have four small humans that I created. <laughs> They're six, eight, 10, and 14 now. And one of them was given an autism diagnosis about age 18, 19 months. And um, it was like 40 hours a week of in-home supervised ABA, which is applied behavior therapy. My husband at the time, he's still my husband, but he was a CFO and we oh. didn't have like a CEO and a CFO and like a kid that needed extra and being home. And um, so one of us uh, had to elect to have a new way of showing up in the career world. And that's sort of how my journey came. So it, it, it touches me to, to see a similar path that we can yeah. still be amazing solopreneurs and still give back and still be in business, even if our place of work is different than maybe what we originally yeah. envisioned. That, very much different than the original vision, but I love it. I wouldn't change it for the world. I uh, mean, sometimes we're led the right path, even if we don't know it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the other thing that I thought, so we, we have similar interests that I didn't realize either, but I was looking at your website and I noticed your hand was on a, one of my favorite books, I think, right? Daring Greatly, was that by Brene Brown? Yes. yes. Oh, I love that book. So tell me, um, did you notice that you were with that specific book? Was that on purpose or was it just an awesome picture? That was on purpose. And it's kind of like some of those little messagings that are really important for attracting the you know people that I want to be around. So that's so cool that you bring that up. But I was a Brene Brown fan before she was before so cool. Brene was you know, cool. I, yeah. <laughs> So I recently, I had my husband watch the the TED talk and he was like, what are you making me watch? And then it led to, it took like a day, I swear, after we, after we watched it and then it sort of sunk in and then he started asking really cool questions. And so Brene is just like infused into all parts of my life. And I think she's just incredible. So I love that you noticed that book, but yeah, if you I haven't made your so partner cool. watch that with you. I so, so encourage you to do it. It's such a fun experience. I have a lot of my clients do that. I'm like, have your partner watch this and then just see what, what evolves in terms of conversation around it. It's so fun. Yeah. I, one of my things. favorite um, things that, I mean, I've listened to all of her books and read all of her books. So I don't know which version of thing this was, but she kind of talked about like, spotlighting it's like so when you think you're being vulnerable and you essentially barf all of your crap on someone and it's like <laughs> out of context it doesn't actually count it's almost like you're like i dare you to be offended now um okay. and i i might have been doing that i don't know maybe <laughs> um and so i was like huh so why do you do that oh yeah you're sort of hoping they'll be freaked out right away like your preemptive rejection strike so um, oh my gosh yeah I know it was just too much. I was just like, okay, I have to rethink this. What am I doing? Um, but I do a lot of, I like listening to her stuff on a like nice nature walk. Um, gives me time to sort of, like you said, your husband took some time to marinate in the goodness. Cause every time I hear it, it's some, something else profound sort of sneaks through. Yeah. It's fun. I, yeah. I adore her. Uh, so another thing I noticed, which it's a very specific word. And I was wondering if it was, Again, you seem like not an accidental person. So the word <laughs> integrator, so you talked about the solopreneurs and entrepreneurs and you refer to them, um, refer to yourself as the integrator and them as being able to do their big role as a visionary. And I, at one point in my life, I went through some training at, um, for EOS, the Entrepreneur Operating System. So I was just yeah. sort of wondering if that was that kind of in there, like late in It there. is. Yes. I mean, that's amazing. You are, you're so good. You get like two gold stars. So, far. Two stars, yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that term is, is really profound in the EOS um, uh, model. I did the integrator masterclass Academy last year, actually. And oh, wow. the reason why is because I had been um, utilizing EOS with a client of mine for about four years. And so I just wanted to understand it on a deeper level. And I'm one of those rare people that is both the visionary and the integrator. So I can be the visionary in my own business, but then I can easily step into that integrator role. And that kind of ties in with my Colby. But I love that because 
in my journey, I mentioned I started out as a virtual assistant. I have learned that I don't like to do the doing, but I'm really good at coming alongside the visionary and sometimes being the bad cop, but always having the bottom line of the, of the business in the forefront of all of our decisions. So like, tell me about your great ideas. Okay, let's figure out what that really looks like and where does that you know, fall in line with everything that you're trying to accomplish and here's how we're going to get there and here's who we need. So that's the, the integrator role is the, the person to frame all of that out, not necessarily do it, but allow the visionary to keep going and being in that zone of genius, but also keep them a little practical. So keep them on yeah, this I love planet it. most days. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had, um, when I, the last real job or the job I had before this, um, uh, we went through the EOS training as an organization uh-huh. and we had a oh, um, wow. Im- implementer running our stuff. Yep. And, uh, it was really interesting when there were role, like the roles that we were all supposed to be playing versus kind of our natural tendencies was a bit mucked up. And, and so it made sense that things were a bit mucked up. Um, in terms of, you know, we had this one guy who was, who was a CEO and he was supposed to be the visionary and he was randomly visionary, but he really just wanted to touch the boat buttons. <laughs> he just wanted to do the things and he was always in your space doing your things and it, it went poorly, you know, <laughs> it, it went poorly. It was not a good thing. What I love about that stuff, just really quick, is it's so, you know, high level, but yet it brings you back down to the basics. Like you have to have the core fundamentals figured out in order for it to work. So your vision, your core values, you know, the org chart, roles and responsibilities, and what metrics are we tracking? And then it's like you go from there. But every time I, I don't care if you're a multi-six, multi-seven figure entrepreneur, I, that's where we start. And it's so amazing how many times it's like, actually, I don't know. I haven't thought about my vision in years, or I don't know what my core values are, or I think they've changed. And once we go back and start working on that, everything else starts to fall into place like it should. Yeah. I think that other thing we often, um, I don't know if forgets, right. Cause that would imply like it was something, but we like to do the fun, exciting things. And so often we forget about just like basic one-on-one, like you really do send the invoice. So you get paid. It's not fun, but someone (laughs) needs to send it. Right. Just like, just regular, like the baseline. Um, and I think it's especially difficult. Like I would interested in what your perspective is coming from like larger corporate and then being a entrepreneur, there were so many things that were done for us that I don't think we realized were done for us. And then I'm like, Oh, I can do this. I know all the things. Oh wait, you can know all the things. And then you have to do all the things too. Holy banana pants. Like there's a lot of things and you're not a customer service expert anymore, right? You're not a, you're not an expert in all those things. You have your genius zone, but um, that was a bit of a shock for me that while I could do it all, didn't mean I should do it all. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) or I had no choice but to do it all, but I I couldn't do it all at like a billion percent level. Right. So exactly. And there, there is, there's such a learning curve. It's the way that business is done in our corporate life and the tools we use to this entrepreneurial world is (laughs) very, very different. So like my favorite thing, my entrepreneurial friends ask me is it's like the first qualification for a tool. So what does it cost? Like when you're exactly. at, right when you're at work, you're like, oh, Microsoft 55 Office and the SharePoint and this and that. And then now my friend, like, so what email are you using? Gmail or are you using something else free? <laughs> so you're like, yeah, okay, yeah, new perspective, definitely. Um, so like clearly we've gone into like all these little mini detail pieces, but as a certified online business manager who specializes in the entrepreneur solopreneur space. Um, I, I really keyed in on a thing that you, you brought up a few times that you mentioned the power of true partnership. And I wonder if you might explain um, what that means to you and, and why it seems so important in your messaging. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's really about finding businesses that I truly resonate with and want to 
get in at a deeper level and that I'm going to treat as my own because that's how I work. So I need to have that, that true partnership in terms of somebody who is going to be trusting and they're going to trust the process with me and they're going to let me in there and tell me all the things. Like that's a big red flag for me when I'm first talking to a, a prospect, if they're really guarded or, you know, you have to sign an NDA before I can even have a discovery call. I'm like, okay. Or you don't want to disclose financials. That probably means you're not making any money. You know, there's just all these things. Like I want the person who's like, give it to me. Let's get in there. Let's, you know, get uh, our boots my on and do here's the my work. Words. <laughs> right. Because I have long-term relationships with the per- people I work with and that's where that came from it's just my my clients don't want to let me go and so you know our engagement might be up but it's like how can we continue to work together i have developed so many opportunities because they've been requested right it's like okay well would you consider doing this with my business and i'm just in there and i get in the trenches and help you figure it out and i'm constantly thinking about you when i'm looking at my social media and if something pops up and so i want to work with those types of people and i do But I think that that's what sets me apart from so many people because it's not about these are my packages and this is what I do. I want to find somebody that I'm I'm truly going to, you know, they become like family. I mean, so many of my clients come to Vegas and we have two day strategy sessions at my kitchen table. Like I'm not even kidding because I become such a part of their business that it's like, you know, we end up being friends and yeah, that's what the partnership's about for me. Like, I want to be side by side. I want to be in there. It's not just a, oh, I, I talked to you on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. No, 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 no. That's not what it is when you work with me. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, you can do do your work in your terms in the way that mm-hmm. feels great to you. Yeah. Okay, a weird exactly. thing, but your cup and your sweater match. Oh, look at that. How cool. That wasn't on purpose. So cool and totally not on purpose. <laughs> It was totally on purpose. I called you ahead and told you to make them, you know, I'm kidding. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. I forgot that part. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the things, another thing I noticed on your site was you talked about a couple of your offerings and it made a lot more sense after your intro story about the VA connection. But um, what, what would starting to work with you look like? Like so you, you have the strategy consults, you've got roadmap planning, you've got business coaching, like like, but how would someone go, oh my gosh, I have to call Melissa. She's going to be the person that helps me. Blah, 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 blah. What, what would that look I like? I know it's, it's kind of interesting because there's like these two paths of my business. There's the established entrepreneurs and that's the person who, you know, is already making 300,000 minimum in their business. They're probably a solopreneur. They might have like a VA, but they are at the place where they're ready to scale. They want to hire more team members, but they have no idea how to, maybe they've had failed attempts in the past, or they are ready to create a membership site, or they're ready to offer group coaching or whatever it is. And so I'm the person who can come in, they can talk through because I've been behind the scenes and so many successful businesses. So I have that um, experience to bring to the table and my own business experience. And we talk through it and we make a freaking plan <laughs> that you can implement. And that might be, you know, I've hired so many team members for clients, um, because I work with them and figure out actually, this is the person you need. Let's write the job description together. Let me go hunt them down. So that's kind of what that, that work looks like, or let's frame out your membership model and figure out all the tools you need in place. And then because of my own journey and, so many people have come to me and said, can you teach me how you grew your business from a VA to an OBM to a business strategist? And so that has evolved into um, um, coaching. So I do, I started off with one-on-one coaching and I just had so many women and it's, it is, it's women. I don't, I don't work with men in this capacity. (laughs) It just happens to be that way that came to me. And so I had to start a wait list and that led to group coaching. And so there's two ways to work with me in terms of if you already have a VA business or a online business manager business, but you're kind of stuck in that, you know, 2000 to $5,000 spot and you want to get to those 10 K plus months consistently, then I partner with you and say, here's the, here's how I did it. Or this is what you're, you know, this is what you're wanting to accomplish. Here's what I suggest. So way more of a mentoring role and, giving you lots of homework and handholding to get to that place. So those are kind of the two avenues of my business and the one developed organically because of my presence and success in, in the, you know, established entrepreneur space. 
Yeah, that makes sense. So um, what do you wish I would have asked you that I didn't? Oh man, <laughs> that's a fun one. Let's see. I, I would love to share that. I think one of the keys to my success is the power of putting yourself out there and getting uncomfortable on a regular basis. And so joining these communities and being vulnerable in, you know, Brene Brown's terms and, and also just willing to just go for it. And if you find a community and you don't feel like it's the right fit, don't stay there, move on to the next one, keep going and, and reach out to people who are a few steps ahead of you and, you know, collaborate with them and offer to hire them to mentor you. Like, you got to, you got to work hard, but put yourself out there and, and get uncomfortable. So my first business coach and my best business coach in my whole journey, she didn't even coach people like me. And I reached out to her and said, I want you to coach me. And I'm so glad that I did that. And it took me months to like get the courage to do it. And I did it. And it, you know, then I was like, damn, why didn't I do that months ago? So whatever it is you're wishing that you were going to do, like push yourself and go do it. Oh, that's, that's a lovely message. I, and I can't, I can't agree more. I think that's, um, if you do what you always did, you'll be what you've always been. Right. So mm -hmm. if you want something different, you have to be something different. That's right. And I mean, this is a lot of, it's a lot of hustle. Like I know that you can attest to that. It's not, this isn't for the faint of heart. And I get a lot of people that are just like, Oh, can you tell me how you got started? Well, yeah, but like, you're going to have to work hard to get there and be willing to do that. So be prepared and it will pay off. I love that. So, so wonderful. So, um, the last comment I will ask before we kind of wrap up was, um, you said you grow teams, optimize systems and clarify strategies. And that's like wonderfully specific, right? So is there, <laughs> of, of the three of those, is there one that you enjoy the most? Definitely the strategy piece, because that lends into the others. Like I love to partner with a business owner that I've never met before, that clearly, you know, is somebody I'm going to relate well. And I get into that first session and I have already read all of their intake prep work. And I'm just like, I already know what they're going to tell me because I've, it's just, that excitement is so there and I'm going to get them moving forward because what happens is they, you get to that spot as a visionary and an entrepreneur and you're like, and I want to do this and I want to do this. And you're stuck by like paralysis of where do I go next to put all these ideas into place. So I love to like break through that dam with a plan and move them forward again. And like, it's my very, very favorite thing. And that could lead to, okay, we need to build out a bunch of systems or you're lacking like SOPs or you clearly need to get a virtual assistant. Let's start there and get you some help. Let me teach you how to properly delegate tasks and how to maximize efficiency with working with your remote team. So all those other things come from the strategy piece and talking about where are you now? Where do you want to be? Why are you stuck? And then we make a plan. Yeah. I think one of my favorite and my worst things that come about with being an entrepreneur is, um, I used to get stuck in work because I was bored because you only got to do the one thing. And the problem now is that I can do whatever I want. Like, it's like the, uh, the problem of a, overabundance. If people is like, have an abundant mindset. Sometimes I'm like, I think I need to scare <laughs> it down a little. Like I've got abundantly plenty, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> I love that. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> but you know, it's like, yep. Squirrel. Like that's pretty, that's shiny. I, that I'm like, Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, um, and someone like you, it sounds like uh, sometimes it's just like, okay, entrepreneur, being an entrepreneur is lonely. Here are all my crazy ideas. I have so many, I have to make money too. I'm all over the place. Can you just like harness in my crazy cat, like, like herd the cats enough yes. to help me sort of like stabilize and then move forward? Oh my gosh. I kind of just, I'm just going to use that. Yes. That yes. is what I do. You, can, like, you have the video. I'm, you cat herder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the cat herder. That's true. I love it. And it took me years to realize, I mean, it was just kind of, it naturally evolved when I was a virtual assistant for all of these different entrepreneurs. They love to just get on the phone and talk through things with me. And then I would, we would get off and I was like, all they did was talk. And I took notes and I made, and they, they loved it. And it was imposter syndrome in its very finest because people would tell me, 
over and over. Like, it's so helpful to have you to talk through things with and get a plan. And I'm like, but this is easy. This is not work. Like, I don't feel like you're getting, you know, maximizing your ROI with our time together. And then I realized, oh my God, this is what they want. And so to shift into saying like, and this is fun and I can help them. Yes. I want to do more of it. So I do. I love it. I can do yeah. it. I think one I don't, thing I don't get tired. I, I learned the hard way or easy way. I don't know. I learned from someone was that we don't realize that the things that are easy to us are valuable assets because oh. they're easy to us. Like I have a, a, I was a project manager in software for 20 years. I don't think about it. I just do it. It just is right. I have a master's yeah. in it. I like do it. And I remember someone just thinking I was like Einstein. They're like, you, I need you. I would give you all of the money. I'm like, you can give me all the money. <laughs> I'll give you all <laughs> of the money. I hate this stuff so much. I don't get it at all. And I didn't yeah. value it because mm -hmm. it wasn't hard it was like for me. second nature. Yeah. And I oh, think that I we forget that. Yeah. that. Like if it's easy to you, someone else dreads it with all of their being. You guys want to hook up. <laughs> right. <laughs> so exactly. You need it. to get together. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome. So um, anything else that you would like to share with the audience? Like if we leave, uh, we leave the audience with, you know, are you promoting anything specific? What's kind of, what are you trying to fill any programs right now in your company? What's going on for you? Yeah, so I have the next round of group coaching opening in April, um, Ooh, and then we'll yes, and then we'll do another round, uh, most likely in June. So I limit that; it's ten women or fewer because it's really, really intimate. And so, if that's something you're interested in, definitely reach out to me. It's application process, um, and again, this is for people who have already established their business in some form. They're making they're making a couple of thousands of dollars. And they're just like, I want more. I want to hustle. Tell me how I can grow and what I should do next. So it's, it's really fun. And we have some great guest speakers and I need to talk to you about coming in. That would be really, really fun. Uh, and just, I'm always up for some chit chatting with my lady friends. Yeah. So, uh, so I love so it. Great. And I love connecting people. So even if I'm not the right person, like I probably know somebody you need to talk to. So feel free to reach out and awesome. I love being a dot connector. <laughs> awesome. I think we're like kindred spirits. I used to have a I blog know. called Queen of Connectedness because I like just That's know so cool. all the people who know all the people. Yep. So they're like, now I figure out how to monetize the knowings of the peoples, but <laughs> I'll get there eventually. <laughs> um, so thank you again so very much. Just kind of a last parting word for our audience. Um, we do not charge our guests to come on because that would be, you know, shanky. And I also am not getting paid to do this because I do it because I just love getting other women out there to show their amazing. Everyone has a story that's inspiring to me. And I just want all of the voices to be able to get out there, which means that we can always use supporters. So if you go to anchor FM at press play lifestyle, um, you can be a supporter of our podcast as little as 99 cents a month. So hopefully you'll consider it. And if not, listen, 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 because the ladies on here have taken so much time to come spend with us and they're all pretty amazing. So I wanted to say thank you again, Melissa, for your time today. I hope we get to have you on again sometime, maybe in June when you're releasing your, your oh, next be fun time. That would be great. Thank you so much, Jackie. This has been, this is so fun. I just, I know we're going to stay in touch and be great awesome. friends and who knew we had so many things in common. Oh, I, I must have attracted you, right? <laughs> you did. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. And you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye, Melissa. Okay. Bye-bye.